why bother? I mean, this place appears on countless photographs on Insta Twat and Twatter and all the other photo sharing places that people use these days. You've seen it so many times, so why do you want to go and take a photograph of it? Well, I ask you this question. Why not? To answer the question properly, I think we need to dig a little deeper and understand why people take photographs and appreciate that the answer to that question is going to be different for different people. A family on holiday are going to shoot Chroma Pier for the memories. So in years to come, you'll be able to look back at these photos and have memories of being there, what the children look like, what Auntie Nellie looked like, what Grandpa looked like, and you know, perhaps Grandpa's no longer with you. All of these things are important. If you're an amateur photographer, then the reason may be somewhat different. You might come here to indeed get a memory of being here, but you're more likely to be improving your craft. You're more likely to be practicing. You're more likely to be taking uh, an image that you might like to print and hang on your wall at home. Or maybe you're that serious that you want to enter it into a competition. If you're a pro photographer, then, well, those reasons become different again. You could be here because you want to take a photograph that you can print and offer uh, as a print for um, people to hang on their walls. You might have a commission from the peer owner to take these photos. There's all kinds of reasons that people will take these photos and the reasons as I said will be different for every single group of people and I'm sure I've really covered that group of people in you know, just these three simple categories. There will be many many other reasons as well. So that's three different groups of photographers with five reasons between them without me even thinking about it. All come to shoot this wonderful Victorian pier and let's just look at that a little further because we can kind of extrapolate this quite some way. 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, 60 minutes in an hour. That's 525,600 minutes a year that you could capture this pier. And when you start thinking that there's 60 seconds in a minute as well, and the unique opportunities to capture this one structure are just massive. And then of course there's the other considerations as well, all of the angles you can capture it above, below. It's amazing just how many possibilities exist for one honeypot location. I think it's true to say that the vast majority of classic shots of the pier are really enjoying the dodgy symmetry of the main pier going through here or of course looking at the pier from somewhere down on the beach and most of those shots are at sunset. The sunset's literally over the sea at this time of year in the summer and indeed rises over the sea over there as well in summer. It's one of the few places in the entire country and certainly on the east coast of the country that that will happen. It really is a mecca for photographers. I can come here of an evening and find five or six sometimes on the beach just all trying to get much the same shot. But I think it's also fair to say that few of the classic shots down the pier look quite like this. Or this. In the last year, Chroma Pier has become my fern mill. I think I should explain that. For the last 20 years or so, I've lived within about five or six minutes drive of this place. And whenever I saw the weather doing something special at home, I would get in the car, 
throw the camera in the boot, do just a few miles and capture some special images such as this or this. Yet everybody who's ever been to Thurn Mill and has carried a camera has taken a photo of it. It's absolutely iconic. It is the most photographed windmill on the broads. Probably, possibly with the exception of Chesterton, probably the most photographed windmill in England. So why do I keep taking photos of it? Well, one, every photo is unique. And two, I can get pictures like this or like that and be proud of them. I can get these images because I know the place, I know it inside out, I know where the sun rises, I know where the sun falls and sets, uh, yeah, I know how it picks up light, I know all of these things about it and I can just get these shots. But why? Because so many other people have got them. Well, they haven't got my shots. And that matters. I now live within about 15 minutes drive of Chroma Pier. And I've got many, many photographs of this structure this year. Because it's so close, because it's so iconic, because it is a honeypot location. Why am I shooting it? Well one of the reasons is for practice to get to know the structure more, get to know where I can position myself, get to know what time of day I can get shot. And another reason, it's quite a simple reason, it's, it's monetary. People buy photographs of iconic scenes, of iconic structures. It's just what they will buy. There's a gallery up the road, a photographer uh, in there that offers prints uh, of the surrounding area. He's, um, he, he's good at it. And um, by far and away, the biggest sellers for him are big, wide, typically sunset or sunrise shots of chroma pier. Do I want some of that? Hell yeah, why not? But by the same token, I don't want to get the shots that everybody else gets. I prefer shots like this. This is a cold, January morning, drab, wet, drizzly, not of the kind of time that you would expect that this structure excels, but hell does it. Because we turn the photograph into something that's very much more about the colour, or indeed the lack of it, the form of the, uh, the building, uh, the, the pier. The, the structure of it, the contrast. It's a shot that I'm incredibly proud of. Let me know what you think of it. I love it. But when all said and done, you haven't tuned in to find out why I shoot this pier. You've tuned in and watched this video to find out why you should shoot this pier or any other honeypot location because there's plenty of people out there who will say oh I've seen that too many times I'm bored by it and indeed I suspect that there's some truth in that you see these iconic things all the time across social media but that isn't a barrier to you going and get your own personal memories of it your family photos your amateur photos your photos for prints your attempt perhaps to get some commercial work out of it. Don't let any of that put you off because this is your photo, this is your take on an iconic structure and why the hell not? There's nothing stopping you going out there. Your next photo of Chroma Pier or Fern Mill or any other honeypot location could win a competition. It could be the cover of a family photo album, a treasured family heirloom in years to come. It could be hanging on a wall somewhere where you and the rest of the family could say that was a great holiday. It could be hanging on a wall in a gallery with a price tag of £150 on it. All of these things are possible and the only thing stopping them happening is you. So get your camera, whether it's a phone, 
whatever, an instant camera, heck, whatever it is, get out with your camera and enjoy it.